this Aerodactyl? Yeah. I'm gonna lift it up. You can grab it. It is priced on the back as well. Okay. Thank you. Is it okay if I take it out? Can I also see the Tyranitar? No. Perfect. Yeah, I'm like slowly moving those ones. Is there any way you can do? This is 145. Around, somewhere around 120. Yeah. Can you do somewhere around 130? What is your sticker? It's a Litton. So what'd you get there? Aerodactyl and a Tyranitar. I just got back from the Burbank card show, and this is probably the biggest card show on the West Coast. It was in Anaheim, California at the convention center. It's a pretty big show, and I just wanted to share my experience with you guys, share what cards I picked up. Uh, I'm going to show those in a second. It was pretty big. Uh, we, we went to the show last year, too, and the really the only difference was... That last year it was on like two levels, and this year they got enough to do it on one level, so it was just one giant show. It was very cool. Um, yeah, had a blast. It was probably primarily sports, but uh, a lot of Pokemon as well. 
Um, so it was, it was a super fun show. So many great cards um, on display. And yeah, I'll show you guys uh, what I picked up. So I didn't pick up an absolute ton of cards, but we're going to start off. Uh, so this is just a kind of a beat up Ponyta reverse. Uh, my wife's a huge Ponyta Rapidash fan, so I uh, picked that card up while we were there. Next up, I picked this, the Meltan um, up. Just It was like a dollar, I think, or something. So, yeah, just didn't have it yet. So uh, same deal with the Wattrel. Super cool uh, IR. Just great looking card. Starting with the cheaper stuff. Uh, I didn't have the, uh, the Quaxwell either, so scoop that up. I think those all came from the same binder. Uh, then I picked up this Pikachu. Uh, we just talked about this in the Pikachu video. Uh, picked up a pretty clean copy of that. Then I picked up the Genesect uh, Alt Art. Not sure if I'm going to keep this or not. This is actually my nephew's favorite Pokemon, or it was. He's bouncing around between uh, favorite Pokemon, so I might end up giving this to him. Uh, but yeah, picked this up for pretty affordable too. Then, this was actually the my first pickup of the day. Now, this card's a little beat up. Uh, it, I, I wouldn't... It's not quite damaged, but it's... Hev well, between heavily played and damaged, if I'm being honest. But I absolutely love Houndoom. I love this card. And it was really cheap, so I was able to talk him down just because of the uh, status of the card. So, uh, this is going to go in my binder, so I didn't need a super clean copy or anything. Just, just wanted to pick it up. Uh, then we started picking up some 151, uh, still working on my master set, and this was a good step uh, towards completing that. We got the Dragonair IR here, needed that for the master set. So I had this, uh, I had the Pikachu in Japanese, but obviously I need it for my English set. Uh, this proved to be uh, one of the toughest cards to actually get. Uh, so we went on the last day of the show, which is good and bad because often there's a lot of deals to be had on the last day, people just wanting to move stuff. But at the same time, a lot of the cards are already gone. So this was on the Sunday. So uh, it was really hard. This is really hard to find this Pikachu. Also, uh, I was looking for the Ammonite IR. Nobody had it in the whole show. Uh, so, you know, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, I'll go into my thoughts on that at the end of this. But I uh, also picked up the uh, Charizard. Needed that. I needed, a, I still need a decent chunk of cards for the master set so we're, we're working up to it slowly but surely then we picked up the blastoise super clean card i hate how uh its top loaders are all scratched beautiful card i like the the circle you can kind of see yeah anyways uh yeah this was the last of the starters i needed for the the main line there then i picked up a tyranitar uh not not a gradable copy, not going to get a 10 or anything, but uh, just picked it up for the binder once again. Affordable prices, so couldn't pass it up. Then possibly my biggest pickup, picked up the Aerodactyl. Uh, this was a clean looking copy. It might be a little bit off center, top to bottom, so probably won't grade this. I think that was the only issue. Um, but yeah, I love Lost Origin. And I already have the Giratina, so you need to pick up the Aerodactyl. So um, that was kind of my pickups there. Now, I did want to just uh, talk about a few things about the vibe of um, the show from the Pokemon perspective, from what I was seeing. And I'm mainly going to touch on 151 again. So like I said, the Omanyte, we went through every table. We went, we saw every table at the whole show. And uh, we were, we were asking, um, I had people, people helping me uh, looking for this Omanyte and nobody nobody had it so and the pikachu was very difficult to find um while there was a lot of 151 at the show there wasn't a ton and every vendor i talked to they were just like it's just still just flying off flying flying out of their cases um yeah so everyone is master setting this or wanting to master set including myself including you guys most of you guys right and the demand it's one thing to, it's one thing to see, you know, see online, kind of what things are doing. But when you go to a show and a show of that size, and you're just and you're seeing, and talking to, you're seeing all the booths, all the crazy cards, right? And everyone is still just saying that it's it's insane. One fifty one. I can't can't keep any one fifty one in stock. Can't keep any one fifty one in stock. 
Um, the only ones that I saw like pretty consistently were probably mostly the Charizard SIR and the in the Blastoise SIR um, were probably the most common that were still in cases because I feel like a lot of people already picked up the bigger cards for the most part and a lot of people are just like I, like I'm doing trying to fill in the gaps uh, with some of the other uh, some of the other lesser cards. So I still have a ways to go on my master set, but uh, yeah, just honestly, it was like the hype, the hype around 151 is still just so crazy. I honestly can't believe it. It was like, a yeah. Um, and then the show itself, like I said earlier, it was mostly sports cards. Probably the majority was sports cards. Uh, it's not like, like at Collecticon, it's like 90% pokemon and tcg and then like 10 percent sports this is probably like 60 to se uh, 60 to 70 percent sports and like 30 or 40 percent pokemon uh but that was still a lot because this show is absolutely massive and <clears throat> it also i was seeing lots of sealed product there <clears throat> saw some evolving skies boxes saw lots of booster boxes um what I saw people carrying around the most uh, was Shrouded Fable ETBs. So a lot of ETBs being carried around, uh, having been bought at the show. So the market, honestly, is crazy. It's healthy. The hobby is healthy. Um, you know, I, I, a little while ago, if you guys aren't familiar, I did a, like a super small local card show. And that, just for my little local area, I thought, wow, it was just, you know, the hobby's doing doing well, um, but when you see it at this scale, yeah, it's honestly crazy. So, what I came from at the end of this was my thought process was just I'm I've never been more excited, bullish, optimistic about the hobby, about collecting, uh, about where Pokemon's going, everything. It's it's absolutely insane, just super exciting. The energy in the building, it was just fun uh, all the way around. So if you guys haven't been to a big card show, um, I would recommend going preferably probably a Collecticon if you're mostly into Pokemon. That would be my recommendation because those are super fun. And yeah, the card show, a big card show is just such an experience. You can start to get overwhelmed. Uh, we got to the point where not even halfway through where you just start like becoming immune to the cards and also like it was crazy like besides a lot of the crazy pokemon cards that you see there was so many crazy uh like kobe bryant autographs like so many uh and they're so expensive it's just you could become numb to it and you just go okay all right i've seen those let's move on let's move on it's not impressive anymore uh so yeah wild wild stuff um but that is gonna do it for this one guys uh thank you so much for watching a little bit a uh, different of video um if you're this far in the video and you're not already subscribed obviously you enjoyed the video so do me a favor hit the subscribe button hit the like button and then leave me a comment uh let me know let me know if you've been to a card show and what your experiences were but that's gonna do it for this one i'll catch you guys in the next one and remember it was never a fail